Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Star Family Wisdom Podcast. Thank you so much for being with us. I'm Jenna Layden, founder of Star Family Wisdom and former Global Vice President for Whole Foods Market. And I'm Sinead Willihan. I'm a former special needs educator and currently the podcast co-host for Star Family Wisdom. And Star Family Wisdom is a paradigm shifting community, podcast, and online school that we've created for your spiritual and cosmic evolution. And although we only met last year, the journey and experiences that have led us here were very similar. Five years ago, Sinead and I each had experiences that changed our lives forever. And after years of exploration, research, healing, we know now that our reality is so much more beautiful and expansive than we used to believe. And when we became friends, we started having long conversations about our experiences, the expansion of consciousness, the reality of extraterrestrials. And we realized we wanted to share these conversations with you. Yes, because we realize that this is a very pivotal time in human evolution. We want to support that. And also, it's time for the world to know that we are not alone. ETs and UFOs are real. So on this podcast, we intend to share conversations between each other and with special guests, fascinating guests, um, that will contain ideas and information that's going to inspire you and support you on this very wild journey of being a human being. We're going to explore ancient clues that, about our untold human story, our human origins and history, and real life supernatural experiences, as well as lost knowledge from the stars and spiritual wisdom that empowers you to transform your life for the better. And being experiencers of supernatural phenomena and ET contact, it's important to us that we have open, fun, and mature conversations about what is possible and how we're evolving as humans. Mm -hmm. So while we love all things woo, we also love all things science, mindset, spirituality, health and wellness, and of course, extraterrestrial. So through these conversations, we want to explore how all of these seemingly separate topics actually connect and intersect to inform the evolution of our human experience. Ultimately, we want everyone to embrace a multidimensional reality without fear. And things will get a little far out here from time to time, but we'll ground you in the science and the research that we use to expand our minds and open to the incredible nature of our reality. Mm -hmm. So together, we're going to remember and discover again our place among the stars. And in this episode, we're talking about the more woo side of things, we're investigating the woo-ness. We're talking about what is woo, what is too woo, how much is woo, like where does it <laughs> exist, how does it manifest, is it good or bad, so to speak. And so we want to talk about all these different variations of woo in our lives and how they contribute to our spiritual development and to our exp- exploration of being human. And how woo-woo is our new normal. Yes. <laughs> So, you know, we, for many years, thought woo-woo stuff was weird, right? Like, I used to make fun of it. A lot of people I know make fun of it. And what I've realized is that, you know, we make fun of the things we don't understand. And now, you know, after going through this you know, multi-year journey of having these supernatural, magical experiences happen, starting to access new information about how our reality works, ancient wisdom, ancient, you know, magical practices that have existed. Mm -hmm. My, you know, understanding now is that the woo-woo stuff, like the woo-woo part of our reality is actually just a really important part of our reality. It's a natural part of our reality. (laughs) Yes, it's a kind of semi-buried, maybe disguised, you know, um, part of our reality. Yeah, Yeah, I think that we, you know, we've really, you and I talk about this so much and everybody that we know who's in this field of curiosity and open-minded exploration, open-minded investigation, right? Because you do have to be pretty open-minded to be able to even consider that woo might hold some value, right, for our progress. But it really is just as valuable as any other form of information. I mean, there's a wealth of woo out there. (laughs) There's really a wealth of woo. I had no idea how much was available to me, the richness of content and the richness of weirdness that was out there, you know, which was very refreshing because we're so used to learning and receiving information in a very certain, in a very particular kind of way, yeah. right? And and learning on the woo, learning in the woo is really um, much more about being flexible in your learning and being flexible yeah. in your perspective, being open-minded, yeah. still using discernment. That's something we talk yes. about, but, yes. you know, being open, being flexible, being curious and willing to explore. Yeah, mm-hmm. because life is an exploration. And, you know, for many years, it was 
this side of life was blocked for me, right? It was not visible to me. And the visibility I had to spirituality and woo-woo stuff, quote unquote, if you're watching us on YouTube, you'll, you'll see us, you know, gesture and talk about this. But, uh, you know, I, I was blocked from it because I was raised in an environment where that was not real. It was mm-hmm. or not okay, or there were stigmas attached right, to Mm -hmm. people who were magical or people who practiced certain things. And so you kind of get taught to ignore that or or de-emphasize it or worse, make fun of it. Yeah, yeah. And also, you know, it's kind of fascinating how much woo is actually in our mainstream and it's just kind of packaged to look like it's so-called normal, you know, such as religious practices. A lot of religion has quite a bit of woo in it, you know, meaning stuff that isn't easy to explain, stuff that's kind of mysterious, stories about miracles, stories about, you know, <laughs> magical happenings. How come that's okay and this woo isn't? I mean, know? look at how the Pope is dressed. That's kind yeah. of woo-woo. <laughs> I love that. It's true. He gets to wear some seriously crazy right? hats. Right? <laughs> Not to mention he has a see-through car. I mean, that's that's kind of woo-woo. That's kind of weird (laughs) (laughs) woo-woo. Right? So who who are they to tell us that, you know, some of what we like is weird? (laughs) Yeah. So kind of what, you know, we're giggling and laughing about right now is the fact that there really really is no such thing as normal. And normal is really a package perception that is presented to us, right? It has a lot to do with consumerism and advertising and economy and media and all this stuff. That's perfectly fine, maybe in some ways, but not so fine in other ways, especially when it comes to our human potential, our human evolution, um, you know, these are things that we want to transcend. They're pretty, they're pretty low vibrational, you know, low level thinking on the whole in terms of our general expansion. So with Wu, we get to expand so much more, right? We get to investigate things that mm-hmm. are not new, right? Wu has been around for a very, very, very long time, maybe even since the very beginning of human beings, not to mention human civilization, yeah. right? we're, we're inherently ritualistic beings yeah. you know we always have habits like this is true of the very mm-hmm. early human beings or the very early human beings that we know of i just want to say um but uh you know ritual is an important part of being human and so it's important to know how we use it yeah. right because we have lots of rituals that are not to our advantage yeah. and we can replace them with some wooey ones yeah and yeah. thousands of years ago we used to be a lot more woo woo right like humans used to actually live in a much more magical reality right Mm -hmm. and we've just kind of we've devolved in some ways right we've we've lost some of that as we went through this period of you know contracted consciousness and what's cool now is that you know while we've had to go through this journey of embracing our weirdness in contrast to mainstream you know Mm -hmm. um culture we have this ability to be our authentic selves now, but it's a journey to get there. Right. And, and for me, like embracing my woo woo was a journey because it, I felt weird and I felt like I was going to be judged. And Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I felt like people were going to make fun of me, you know, Mm -hmm. even as I was leaving whole foods and having conversations a little bit about, you know, what I was starting to do, there were people with that mindset still making fun of people who have crystals. And it's like, well, you're missing out. I th- you're missing out. Well, because actually, you know, our CDs are made with crystals. A lot of our technology is made with crystals because it, you know, contains information. It yes. can contain memory. So, yes. you know, it's like we make fun of the things we don't understand. And we make that's, fun of the things we don't understand. Is what it is. And then you yeah. have to move through that, like, process of accepting yourself wholeheartedly, no matter what someone else is going to say or think, right? But, you know, we live in a day and age where you know, it's certainly not like where we were when witches were being burned, right? Like, like there's been real violence towards people who want to live in this, you know, kind of communion with nature. And that's kind of how I think of magical stuff, right? Is you were living in this way where we're communing with nature and the universe in a different Mm -hmm. way. And, Mm -hmm. and, you know, that was, kind of tried you know it was stamped out you know for a period of time yeah and you know there are many many theories that this was done deliberately um you know that is definitely a worthwhile topic to look into um but we don't want to focus on that heaviness too much today we want to focus more on what is available to you right now because we're living in a world and in a reality right now where a lot of possibilities are available to us even if we're living in, I don't know, some remote part of the world, we can still make magic happen in our lives by utilizing the tools that the universal 
will, the universal energy field, and that nature provides for us all the time. All we have to do is be willing to be in a space of re receiving that, right? And being willing to and able to recognize it and take it in when, it's, when it comes and be able to utilize it, right? So being wooey is part of how you can utilize these messages that are sort of ineffable, right? Ineffable and not, not necessarily something that's tangible and something that's solid and directly in front of you. It's a more subtle, instinctive wisdom. And so woo might sound silly, but actually woo holds a great deal of wisdom and a great deal of value and a great deal of content mm -hmm. that can be very useful to us. Does this mean that all woo is good woo? What do you think, Jenna? Uh, you know, I think I think there there might be such a thing as too much woo. And, you know, we'll talk more about like more of the magical um, practices and, you know, the, the science behind some of this in future episodes, right? We're going to talk about manifestation in the next episode yes. and get into like the science of that. But um, but yeah, there's some stuff that's kind of out there for me. <laughs> you know, like I'm, I'm pretty weird now, right? Like I talk about being an ET contactee. I talk about, um, you know, shamanic practice, energy medicine. I've got an array of crystals that I use, you know, like I'm pretty woo these days, mm -hmm. but, but, you know, I think for each of us, it's, you know, it's like just about kind of personal preference and like where we're at in our own life. And so for me, yes, there's some stuff that's still a little too out there, but I'm not like judging those people for right. who they're being, you know, I think as long as we're not hurting anyone, right. As long as we're not harming anyone and how we're living our life and, you know, practicing our spirituality, it's all fine. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's all just about kind of where we're at in our journey and what it rings true for our soul. Yeah. yeah, I feel, I agree. I mean, I feel ultimately it's none of our business how other people live, you know, even somebody that we're living with in the same space, it's not necessarily our business how they're choosing to live, right? Yeah. Our journey is for, to take ownership of ourselves yeah. and to take responsibility of ourselves and rather than looking at the flaws of others to go, okay, what are my flaws? What are the things I need to improve on, right? Yeah. Rather than putting it out there on someone else, that's not really that fair. But I agree with you. There is such a thing as too much woo. And I think, again, it is related to your own barometer and what you feel like is too much for you yeah. would be perfectly fine for someone else. Yeah. So it's your individual uh, connection or how much that that level of woo-ness matches yeah. you. Yeah. And as we get more woo and weird, you know, I think one thing I've reflected on is like, how do I, how do I still show up in an authentic way and be myself and, and allow myself to be true to myself, mm -hmm. but also not impose my woo-ness on other people, right? Because they're living their journey and it's not for me to impose on them. Right. And so, so yeah, it's, it's, it's all about like, how do we bring that into our lives in a way that is supportive for us and, you know, uplifting us and uplifting others around us, but not in a, you know, confrontational or imposing way. Right. Yeah. yeah because, because we believe there's no one size that fits yeah. all, right? There's no one size yeah. that fits all. And and so many wise leaders have said, hey, whatever works for you, you know, if being Christian works for you, if being woo works for you, whatever helps you become a better person, whatever helps you evolve, whatever helps you help others, if that's what works for you, then use it. So I want to talk a little bit about like, what are your weirdest woo woo things that you do? You know, because I think like part of what we're passionate about is sharing our journey and sharing ourselves with you mm -hmm. because you know, we're all just helping each other become more of our true selves, yes. right? And we can't do that if we don't just share authentically about our lives and what it's like and what we're into, right? Mm -hmm. And so what are you into? What are your woo-woo practices? I've thought a lot. I mean, I definitely, um, you know, I'm an alchemist. And so I like mm -hmm. kind of playing with unseen things, right? Like unseen energy fields and that's difficult to describe because I'm not necessarily using something physical in my hands, but it is a little woo because a lot of people think, oh, you can't do that. That's ridiculous. You know, what do you think? You can use x-ray vision and see through the wall and what's going on in your neighbor's <laughs> garage. You know, you can't do that. But that's not really what I'm talking about. It's more of um, having an understanding of the inherent nature of energy and how it works and how we can use that, right? So that's still pretty wooey for a lot of people, but that's something that I engage in on a daily level. And I also talk to nature quite mm. a bit. Yeah, I talk to nature. I talk out loud to myself. I talk out loud to my ETs, you know, the ETs that come down and communicate with me. That's pretty weird. <laughs> yeah, that was nuts. But I'm bonkers, I'm bonkers, and proud of it. No, um, I just really feel that, you know, doing these so-called unusual things are ways that 
may not seem like much, but the more, again, the more you do them and the more you invite this kind of practice of stepping outside of the box of how we usually yeah. do things, right? And kind of flexing our paradigm a little yeah. by doing even small things, right? Like it's kind of, it makes me think of Shawshank Redemption. If you've seen the movie Shawshank Redemption, there's a guy who's in jail for 20 years or something like that. And he has this tiny, tiny, tiny little hammer and over the course of 20 years or a decade, he just chips away at the stone of his jail wall and ends up creating a tunnel out to escape, you know, 20 years later. But he had to have patience and use this tiny little hammer that by the end was worn down to a little nub, a little nub but just keep chipping away at it, right? Keep going, keep going. So I find that, you know, it might be a bit woo to say, yeah, I kind of do these airy-fairy or seemingly airy-fairy practices but they are actually incredibly grounding because they bring me more and more into myself and what I want from my mm -hmm. life by helping me challenge my paradigm and, and challenge that. the box yeah. that I'm in. Yeah. 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 Some people might think that's kind of weird to like talk to trees, to talk to nature, mm -hmm. but like there are indigenous tribes and cultures who absolutely talk to nature. Like nature talks back to them, like spirit talks to them through nature. Like that is a part of our reality we can mm -hmm. access that we can you know step into so yeah it's like that's might seem weird to people but it's it's it's, a very it's something real, that's possible yeah <laughs> it is something that's possible yeah. you know and if you want to get seriously woo and dive into things like uh the quantum field and quantum physics we know that there really is no such thing as time and place right there really isn't time is a con a construct and space is also a construct everything that we think is solid is not actually solid it's made up of tiny little molecules that are constantly vibrating right so everything is actually vibration energy and light including us but we have this illusion that things are a certain way. And so I think it's really important to be a bit woo to help yourself flex your mindset, yeah. you know, and allow new things to come in. Yeah. Yeah. New possibilities, yeah. new doorways to open. And who knows what they look like, right? It could be, it could be, it could feel incredibly woo to somebody to have a random conversation with a mysterious stranger on the street that somehow changes their mindset for that day or makes them think of something new. Like, how do you know that isn't an unseen guardian, you know, coming down in a human form? These things have happened. They, they've been recorded in stories in ancient and more modern civilizations all over the globe for as long as human history has recorded them, right? So there are a lot of things that we think are just bananas that actually do happen yeah. all over like, the world. Our reality actually is woo-woo. <laughs> like, yes. like, like our reality is actually a lot more weird than we were taught. It really is. <laughs> right? It and we really just is. kind of blocked out these other parts of our reality. So yeah, the true nature of reality is kind of woo-woo. It is kind of woo-woo. <laughs> so what makes your reality Oh, good question. So like, what do you think is your wooist practice, for example? Let's start with that. Yeah. So, so yeah, every single day I also talk to my invisible team. So we all have this invisible team around us, whether that is our guides or angels or ETs. Ancestors. Ancestors. Yeah. People that are no longer souls who are no longer here in the physical, who are, you know, on the other side who we can commune with. Mm -hmm. And at first, you know, when I first stepped onto this path and was opening to that and realizing, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. That's a thing. It felt a little, <laughs> it felt a little weird, you know, right. to just talk to someone who's not there, you know, physically. And, and I think, you know, a lot of people kind of get hung up on that, yes. right? But that's kind of weird. That feels odd, but, but it is something that has now become really important to me and something that I do every single day. And I ask for support. I commune with them. I ask, you know, my non-physical team to help me, right? Like, yes. what am I missing? What yes. am I not seeing? Like, what do I need to work on? You mm -hmm. know? Um, mm -hmm. And that's become just a part of my like everyday thing. Um, yeah, I think one of my most like woo-woo moments recently was here in Sedona. When I got here, I was doing a lot of like hiking, right? And checking out the area. And I was out on a trail and- um, I love this story. <laughs> you know where I'm going with yes, this. Yes, I do. Um, so I was out on a trail and I was just looking down at the ground, you know, checking out the rocks and everything. I saw this incredible stick. I'm talking about an incredible stick. That's kind of weird, right? So, <laughs> so I saw this incredible stick and it looked like a magic wand. Like it looked like just like one of the wands out of Harry Potter. And 
as a kid, a teenager, I loved Harry Potter. And I was like heartbroken that the world of Harry Potter was not our world, right? Like I wanted to live in that world. I wanted to live in this magical world where that stuff is possible, Mm -hmm. right? Where you can Mm -hmm. levitate stuff, make stuff happen. Expel the armus. Manifest stuff, (laughs) right? (laughs) Fill up, you know, the cup of butterbeer with your wands. Like that would be amazing. And so anyway, I was out on this hike and saw this stick and was like, that's my magic wand. I'm finally going to have a magic wand. (laughs) Screw it. You know, I don't care what anyone else thinks. So here I am out on this hike, carrying my magic wand, like Mm -hmm. playing with it, you know, while I'm hiking. And it felt great. It was, it was awesome. And I I still have it. It's in my meditation room. Yeah. Speaking of busting out of your paradigm, I mean, as adults, we're definitely not (laughs) supposed to go hiking to collect magic wands, right? That makes us look seriously bonkers. But, you know, again, I come back and back over and over again. Yeah, who cares? Ultimately, who cares, first of all? Because each one of us is meant to live. I don't like live your best life. I think that's kind of an overused phrase, even though it's got lovely meaning. But, you know, each one of us is meant to live the most fulfilling life as authentically as we can yeah. and that we all have our individual path and we're allowed to do that however yeah. we want you know, yeah. really, we are allowed to do that. We yeah. just have to give ourselves the permission. Again, as long as we're not harming anyone right. or hurting anyone What's in the, the process, yeah. it like just do you, right? Yeah, yeah. Be your weird self. Carry, right. carry your magic wand around. Wear your rainbow <laughs> pants. Wear your rainbow <laughs> pants. Skateboard, to, you know, skateboard to work. Yeah. Like who cares? Right? You can do. You can really do however you want. And often, I find the people who are the wooest, or not the wooest, but people who are woo are the ones who inspire me the most yeah. because it's not the usual stuff, right? Yeah. It's not the usual representation in their, um, even in just visually how they present themselves. They might dress a little bit unusually. Yeah, they're more interesting people. They're more interesting and they have interesting things to say and they have uncommon yeah. things to say. Our right? world would be so boring if everyone was exactly the same, right? Oh and, and we get, you know, we get raised in this way where we're kind of taught we're supposed to be exactly like these other people. And that's actually not what we're supposed to be doing no we're supposed, we're supposed to, be, to be finding our woo yes <laughs> we're supposed to be finding our woo and being the best versions of ourselves that we can be that's all our responsibility yeah. really is so yeah. you know this stuff for me it's really about um the feeling that you get you know the feeling that jenna got when she found her magic stick on the hiking trail that's really <laughs> all that matters that tells you something in that moment when you get that yeah. feeling right we all know what that's like where you get that certain kind of feeling yeah. oh there's something something special it's about like this or something playful it's like yes. it's like finding that like childlike playfulness in life yes. and, and 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 i know now that you know part of like being able to manifest is also about like playfulness and like you know finding you know getting to a lighter state in life and you know we'll talk more about that you know in, in another episode but mm-hmm. but yeah when you can find that just fun place right where it's like i'm not worried about what someone's thinking or what someone's saying about me. I'm just having fun and Mm. I'm just living my life in a fun way and finding things that bring me joy. That's an incredible place to be. And, and, but sometimes that is woo woo, right? Like sometimes that to other people seems out there Mm -hmm. or weird. Mm -hmm. And, and I know, you know, for me, like following my passion, ultimately turned out to be kind of weird, right? And quote unquote weird, you know. Ditto, ditto. So <laughs> so, you know, here we are, you know, living our authentic selves, you know, being weird in our own way and With having more of a sense of play. A blast. Yeah. And having a blast. I mean, really, it is so true. This whole thing that you know, I heard all my life, which I thought was woo, follow your heart, follow your passion, and you will have a happy life. I was like, oh, yeah, whatever, you know, like, that's not going to work. That's like commercials or, you know, television or movies. But it's actually true. If you follow yeah. what feels right to you, which yeah. to me means following your heart, you follow those instincts and those feelings that feel right. Yeah. And you let yourself play and yeah. you let yourself explore and be an adventurer and push your paradigms a little further out from, from your reality, you know, kind of just see what that feels like. It, it, it opens you up. It just inevitably opens you up to more of who you are and more of what life can be. Yeah. Really does. Yeah. yeah. And now, you know, it's hard to do that when we're programmed, you know, in a certain way that makes us feel unsafe. 
yeah. going there, right? And so, you know, we have to get to a place where we have, you know, healed, you know, enough of that programming to feel safe, right? Like putting ourselves out there as our real Definitely. selves. And, you know, we'll talk more in the manifestation episode about the programming and the science of the mind and wounds and trauma and how we unpack that, mm -hmm. you know, to, to get to, you know, a better place. Mm -hmm. But, but once we can find that, true self, right? Like, what am I into? What do, what do I actually really like? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And start to follow it. Magic starts to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it's something that seems totally innocuous, you know, even if it's something like, oh, I shouldn't be an accountant. I should be baking muffins or I should be making cupcakes. You know, I just feel like that would bring me joy. And you think, okay, I'm just making cupcakes. What's the big deal here? But then as soon as you actually listen to that you just go with it you don't judge it you don't analyze it you don't say no this is stupid or whatever don't get into the word you know left brain space just go with the instinctive feeling make the muffins or the cupcakes and it inevitably yeah. reveals something else yeah. that takes you further along your path yeah. so again you know just because you want to explore or bust your paradigm open however you phrase it it doesn't mean you're immediately going to get what you need and you're you know the answer is going to arrive at your doorstep and boom it's going to be right there sometimes you have to just take these baby steps forward dip your toes in the woo and see what what else arises from that right so i want to ask you a question jenna what is, let's see, what is your weirdest woo moment? Because we think that weirdness is wonderful. We think that woo is wonderful, but sometimes there are moments, even if we're open to the woo and we're yeah. familiar with it, there are moments that kind of make us go, what's happening right now? I don't understand. Yeah. Have you had a moment like that? Oh God. Yeah. I mean, okay. big ones, you know, we, you can actually go back to our ET contact episode. I think it's episode number three to learn more about this, but I, you know, received messages in my head after right. I got on the spiritual path and started meditating and started opening myself, right, to the spiritual nature of our reality. I had started to understand, you know, the fact that we do have guides and angels, and I was mm -hmm. opening myself to that. And, and I knew that technically this was possible, probably, but when it happened to me, <laughs> that's another level, that's another level, yeah. like of, oh my goodness, okay, well, I think I trust in this. I think what I know is true, but now it's happening to me and all of my other societal programming is telling me that this is wrong and weird. Right. Right. But I know this means something. And so how, yeah. did, how did you know that it wasn't just you being bonkers? How did you yeah. know that it was real? Yeah. Yeah. That's a great question because <laughs> when it happened, it was like undeniable. I was, I was having a thought um, process happening. I was thinking to myself, I was stewing on something. I was like, I was being a little like angry about something. And all of a sudden this message came in and cut off that thought, like stopped me dead in my tracks mm -hmm. and basically told me I was looking at it the wrong way. So it was very clear that I was interacting with some other entity that was not me. Yes. It, and it was helpful. And it was information that was guiding me i'm getting chills now <laughs> it helping me they they were showing up to support me and and so after that happened even though i had the moment of like oh my god oh my god now the woo woo stuff's real <laughs> you know <laughs> like oh my god this is happening even though i had that moment afterwards i was able to process and think like well no this this was helpful so there's nothing wrong with it you know clearly it was not me so i don't know where it's coming from but it seems really supportive mm -hmm. and it seems really loving and helpful so i think i'm just going to be open to this yeah i love that you said that because i think that's a great barometer to use you know even if we're not sure if something that's coming in is from us or from something or someone yeah. else if it fits and it feels right and it's not harmful yeah. and it's, you know, helpful and it kind of makes you go, oh, I can change my trajectory here yeah. and do better in yeah. whatever I'm trying to do by, by listening to this voice. That ultimately, what's the harm? Yeah. Like, whether it's from you or a cloud in the sky, it actually yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, fast forward and, you know, we... Uh, I figured out eventually where that was coming from. You can learn more about that in our other episode. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, like, that's one of those moments of you know, the, the rubber, you know, was meeting the road there, right? right? I had opened myself to woo. I had opened myself to this other, you know, part of our reality, but I still had not fully experienced it yet. Mm -hmm. And then I had a moment of experiencing it where it was like, wow, okay, this is real. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, let's go. 
we're ready. We're ready to make ourselves yeah. more apparent to you. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, that's definitely part of it too. Being wooey, you know, you have to be willing. Yeah. You have to be willing. Yeah. You have to be yeah. willing. You have yeah. to be able to be open and flexible and receptive yeah. to whatever is going on. Even things that seem to be very subtle or very uh, quick, you know, like a blip in time. And that can pass by so quickly that you might completely dismiss it. Right. But to have a state of awareness where you're able to recognize these opportunities is yeah. incredibly important. What was your biggest woo moment? Oh, gosh, that's actually pretty easy for me to say. Um, this is I think I talked about this in our ET episode. Um, so it is now March 2022. And in August 2021, I was at a, a outdoor CE5 presentation that was attended by something like 50 people. It was COVID, so it wasn't a very big group. And this was in Illinois and uh, the middle of the day, you know, one o'clock in the afternoon, it started, or two o'clock in the afternoon, it started. And um, at three o'clock, and I had this thing about threes, but at three o'clock, this being just materialized about 15, 20 feet away from me, like in broad daylight in front of me, nobody else could see it, but during a CE5 <laughs> presentation, and I was kind of like, like I really they had a very hard time digesting what was visually in front of me, not to mention my brain, my human brain was going, what is like, yeah, you know, going through this kind of hamster wheel of questions to help myself digest what I was seeing, right? And then it was this huge, huge experience that, uh, you know, is very long, so I won't go into it with a lot of detail. What did the being look like? Um, it was very tall and it was quite slender and it didn't have, it had large eyes and I couldn't see a mouth or, or ears or anything like that, yeah. but it was also slightly, it was basically made of mist or fog. Mm -hmm. It was kind of made of this sort of iridescent cool stuff. Uh, I don't know how to phrase that, but also my whole environment changed. My perception changed. It was as if everything stopped and I couldn't really see the floor anymore. My depth perception changed, all kinds of things happened. And that went on, several things happened inside that experience, it went on for several hours. And then later on that night, I got, a, I got a validation because a photograph was taken of me by someone else who didn't even know me. And the photograph was physical, visual evidence of what I had experienced. So Amazing. yeah, it was pretty crazy. I, I still, I'm still digesting that to be honest, yeah. because it was, you know, there's a part of me, I think this also happens, we know when you start exploring things that are beyond our norm and beyond our paradigm, you are, you might have moments of going, oh my God, am I bananas? Right. Or, you know, Talk did, about a paradigm shift. Seriously. Right. And like, you know, did, did I create that? Like, did I make that up for myself? Right. 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 Or did oh, I, I had a lot of those moments too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're really, but then you go through this whole process. If you're somebody who's really being honest with yourself mm -hmm. and you're saying, okay, why would I make that up? Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to sell books or, or, or make money off mm -hmm. of it. It was an experience that was just for me. I've shared it with very few people so far. And, you know, why would I create that and then have this, mm -hmm. I can't create this overwhelming magnetic energetic field that basically enveloped me for several hours. Like I don't have the powers to do that, the power to do that. So, you know, it was this process of still questioning, you know, myself and not over analyzing, you know, being, being in a balanced place with that questioning of recognizing my intuition, what my intuition and my, you know, higher mind is telling me as well as the facts of what actually happened, right. right? And kind of looking at all of the ingredients of that experience and and trying to make sense of it. But that was that was pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah. I'm still digesting it now. Well, I think, I think you know, it's like one of those things where a lot of people deny, you know, when we have a, a first big experience, it's easy to go to that place of like, oh no, no. Like, no, this couldn't be happening. Right. Right. Like, right. Oh, no, no, surely, surely this isn't happening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because your brain just can't compute. Yeah. You know, it really yeah. just can't compute because in our so called normal reality, yeah. you just don't have things like that happen. It's right? outside of, it's so outside of our, our, like you said, the norm, the worldview we were raised in, mm -hmm. what we were taught is, you know, part of our reality that mm -hmm. now that we are accessing more of that as humans, like we're, we're evolving in a way where this is just happening more yes. you know, for some of us. And, and so it's, it's a huge paradigm shift for us to embrace. It's fascinating. It's absolutely fascinating what happens. And it's fascinating to know how accessible it is, you know, like all yeah. you really have to do is, um, is be open and willing and flexible, curious, adventurous, and also willing to engage with it, you know, yeah. willing to invite it into your yeah. life and to integrate it into your experience yeah. of it. And then it's just, it's incredible. It's like, you know, uh, Hansel and Gretel, the bread pub, the bread pubs in the forest. We're not going to end up at a witch in a candy house, <laughs> but we're going to end up at some sort of 
trail that's going to lead us further and further yeah. into the forest you yeah. know I kind of like that allegory because of nature nature being a safe space for us to grow and expand and you know have more conscious conscious connection with the spirituality and the intuition that exists in yeah. the world but you know we have to follow those breadcrumbs right bit yeah. by bit by bit and the doors open much more easily than you would think yes but we just heard about that from someone in the star family wisdom community just like last yes, week yes yeah someone took the ufos for and preparing for contact course which has a, a section in it about meditating and connecting with the star races if that's your thing mm -hmm. and he had an experience he was able to connect and he received some messages but you know prior to that he you know he was just opening to all of this right, right. hadn't quite gone there yet and right. was following the breadcrumbs yes. and, then, and then all of a sudden had this really cool paradigm shifting experience yeah yeah we're, we're kind of living in a bit of an illusion so you know there are the walls that we think are around us are really just curtains and we just have to kind of <laughs> move them yeah away. we've talked about the way that a lot yeah. how like now having access to all the information we have access to which we're, we're sharing with you you know on this podcast it is incredible to us how how much of that was hidden from our view before we started the process of getting curious yeah. and, and 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 asking more of those questions because it is almost like as soon as you do that boom all of a sudden the curtain comes back and, and it's all right there it's, it's all just blue. it's all yeah. just hidden right there in plain sight <laughs> yeah it's true i mean it really is amazing i couldn't believe that that you know as soon as i had my awakening my official awakening because yeah. the et showed up a couple of years before that but i wasn't quite getting what was going on and then 2019 they bonged me over the head with the cause with the cosmic frying pan as i like to say and that immediately just blew the curtains apart you know like i couldn't help but see what more was there but you know then i started i got obsessed with the topic and started researching like a mad woman and it was incredible to me how much was there how much was available to me legitimate information like actual legitimized you know real experiences science, yeah science, based information yeah. history you know experiences that people have had that are common all over the world where the themes and the experiences and the messages are common yeah. throughout cultures and societies and over eons as well it's really amazing and it's there it's there that's available for us to find we just don't know because yeah. we haven't pulled the curtain across yet, exactly right? so it's yeah amazing. we've we've opened the curtain and woo woo is our new normal now we yes want, we want it to be part of your normal as well we want you to join us on this woo woo journey <laughs> we definitely do it's a lot of fun i mean it's also challenging of course right you know you have to go through these paradigm shifts that are a little bit stressful sometimes but oh boy is it worth it what is someone else's woo like someone else's practice someone else's um weirdness mm -hmm. that has helped you on your journey so many people um i really feel a strong strong nature and creativity connection mm -hmm. in terms of those two being uh contact modalities that i use in my life and so jacob nordby is somebody i really admire mm -hmm. as a creative and an intuitive um, he's somebody who i look to his example because he doesn't really make a big deal about himself. You know, he doesn't make a big deal about his experiences. He's just living his life as authentically and as creatively and intuitively as he can. And I think that that is incredibly powerful. You know, you don't have to be a famous author or a big personality in the world to be creating a powerful life and having a powerful impact on others. So I found that very inspiring. And most recently, Marguerite Magoglioso, who uh, yes. we're going to be interviewing her in June, and like, we're just thrilled about that. She's a brilliant, brilliant, yeah. brilliant woman. She's talking about ancient history, ancient um, evidence in texts of the suppression over a very, very, very long period of time by many different religions and societies, the Romans, the Greeks, uh, even suppressing female wisdom and the feminine you know the divine feminine and the uh inherent kind of instinctive natural wisdom that women have that uh, men of course also have but it seems to arise in a different way in women right that gets practiced a different way that is incredibly powerful and has been in terms of healing in terms of evolution in terms of uh symbiotic relationships with nature and evolving the human consciousness and it's been really under the thumb of, you know, uh, those in power who have largely been men, of course, um, for many, 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 many generations. And so she's exposing that knowledge and bringing it to the fore. And I think it is fascinating. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm so yeah. excited about that one. What about for you? Who inspires you with their work? Oh, gosh. You know, 
one that comes to mind that was really inspiring early on my journey, um, who is a person who's no longer with us. Some of you may know her, uh, Dolores Cannon. Mm -hmm. She was uh, an author, a hypnotherapist, a past life regressionist for many years. And she just kind of stumbled into that work and, and went on to write tons of books about her experience regressing people, helping people access subconscious memories, access their soul memories. And that was just eye-opening for me, complete paradigm shift for me in reading her work and really mm -hmm. understanding what sort of wisdom we can access, what sort of information we can actually pull through ourselves from our higher self, from our, you know, the Akashic records, the energy field of the universe. It's just incredible. Mm -hmm. Some of the case studies, you know, that have come from that work. And, and so, you know, I would highly, you know, encourage you to check out those books and, and use that, you know, on your journey to really understand what is possible about the journey of a soul yeah. and, and what, what is possible in our universe. And, you know, again, I don't place, um, you know, too much emphasis on like just one case study. But when you look across a lot of them, you can see common themes, you can start to see the patterns. The patterns. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, so when I first started reading those books, it was very woo. It was like very out there right. for me, but very quickly, I got to a point where I realized, wow, okay, yeah, this is being corroborated by a lot of other information I'm finding. And, and I think a lot of this is possible now, but, mm -hmm. you know, again, some of what you learn about, even in that, you know, kind of a way is out there and kind of woo woo. And, but that was, th those books were just huge for me. And so I just loved her journey and her story and, and her incredible. work. Yeah. She's incredible. I yeah. mean, she, she's a giant in the field. Yeah. I feel like she's required yeah. reading for everyone. Yes. Required reading. Yes. <laughs> I mean, in our personal opinion anyway, in our woo -woo opinion. That's but. your homework. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So that's your papers. We'll wait yeah. for you. Um, but no, she's, she's just a massive, massive, you know, giant in the field. And it makes me wonder sometimes, you know, where is she now? And what is she doing? Because we believe that we are consciousness, not our bodies, right? So when we die, it's our body that dies, not us, so-called. And we go up into the ethers and all kinds of other stuff happens that Dolores Cannon talks about. So I'm also curious, you know, what is she doing? Where is she? Is she coming yeah. back to Earth? Did, did, did she already her? incarnate? I think about that stuff a lot. That's really woo-woo, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. like who did that person reincarnate as? And who's this person? Yes. It was actually in my family recently. I I had a step um, cousin who or nephew who had a baby. And when I saw my dad and that baby interact, oh. I knew immediately that that baby was a soul we have known before. Mm -hmm. A soul that I think was one of my grandparents. Wow. And I think they're back and the bond I saw between my dad and that soul was so clear. And, you know, I think I saw it differently because of where I'm at now, but mm -hmm. that was incredible to like, think about that reincarnation process and to really like see it play out in real life. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's something that I think all of us have experienced over and over again, and we just don't always necessarily necessarily realize yeah. what we're witnessing. Connect the right? dots. Yeah. We don't yeah. connect the dots. Yeah. yeah. And that's why doing the research and the exploration is so important, yeah. being willing to yeah. be really, Yeah. Right. So I've got another question for you. Um, who, what was your very first woo -woo moment? Like what's a moment that mm -hmm. you feel like maybe really early in your life, right? Could we talk more about our most recent journey and how we landed here? But of course, these stories often start very early on in childhood. Mm -hmm. Um, when we get these little clues or little glimpses into something else and then we're conditioned out of it. Oh, right? I know. I know. Okay. Okay. For so for like years in a row as a child, I was a witch at Halloween because I really like wanted to be a witch. Ooh, there you go. Yeah. And so that was, I guess, an example of this just kind of subconscious, like soul level, like kind of yearning, you know, that like, mm -hmm. I desperately wanted to embody that in some way, even mm -hmm. though I didn't really understand what that was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I just loved being a witch at Halloween. Mm -hmm. And so I was a witch forever. Mm -hmm. It's like an instinctive memory or yeah. something, right? Yeah. yeah, I was a witch too, almost <laughs> every year. But 
I don't know if it I mean, that's a very same. Halloween thing. But. It is a very yeah. Halloween thing. But at the same time, again, it's the feeling, right? Yeah. It's the feeling that you get. Yeah. Like, there's something, there's a reason that yeah. you're doing it. It's yeah. not just a costume. Yeah. Yeah. Wizard of Oz was also one of my, like, oh, yeah. woo-woo things when I was a kid. That also ties into the witch thing. I was Glinda, the good witch, one year. And my grandmother made me these, like, red ruby slippers. Oh, wow. That were just like Dorothy's. And for a couple of years, I walked around in those red slippers slippers pretending to be Dorothy wow pretending to go to Oz and coming back and I just was like so enveloped in that story wow. and come to find out there's actually a, a pretty interesting like spiritual meaning in the journey mm -hmm. in Wizard of Oz that Frank Elbaum you know um, tells in this fictional way but here I was as a kid you know like deeply connecting to that in this other way, you know? Yeah, it's it's fascinating sometimes how our subconscious mind or yeah. our ancient mind or our higher self recognizes these things, yeah. but we can't recognize them. The front part of us doesn't get it yeah. yet, yeah. right? But it's these little sort of clues, breadcrumbs to help us wake up along yeah. the way, right? And yeah. I think imagination, you know, this is why play is so important to us. Imagination when you're a child gives you so much opportunity for that because you're exploring in your mind yeah, all the time, right? Yeah. You don't have those firm parameters about what's real or what yeah. isn't real, so-called. So I would have moments like walking home from school, for example. I was going to say, what's yours? Yeah. Well, I had one. I mean, I had lots because like, my experiences started when I was four, but I had this one thing that I really loved to do. And this was really, uh, like, I really felt this, you know, and I still kind of remember the feeling it was almost as if it was real and I don't know if that was my imagination or, or what was happening in these moments but there was this way that I walk home from school and so there was this sort of curvy road that always gave me this feeling like there's something energetically different about that road so I'd walk along this road and there were um, little dips in the sidewalk you know where cars could drive up into their, uh -huh. into their driveway and so to me as a child, those little dips in the sidewalk were entrance ways into other dimensions. Ooh, cool. And so I could step into them and go somewhere else, or I could stay on the sidewalk and in my own reality. I love that. Right? Like kids are so smart. They really are. In terms of like their magical selves, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. And that, that instinctive knowledge yeah. that we all carry, right? Like those memories that we all have, those I love ancient, that. ancient memories. Yeah of the knowledge that we gain from all the lifetimes that we live, that knowledge doesn't go away. It becomes encoded into our DNA. It, it does, becomes encoded yeah. into our energy field. And then it's like a little bell rings from that energy field. And you come <laughs> into contact with something yeah. that's kind of going to help you remember yeah, it. Like right? memory, yeah, it's like memory. Yeah. That's yeah. So yeah. I, I love, love that. that. Y'all yeah. will have to tell us in the comments what your childhood woo moment was what your weirdest woo thing is that you do so mm -hmm. we've we've been asking each other questions but tell us yours like we want to hear from you about your journey and your experience and the more we share together the better this this whole life experience will be yes <laughs> yes community is so incredibly important you know if you if you write to us and tell us about unusual experiences that you've had or things you've tried we're not going to say oh you're bonkers right we're going to say that's so cool um, we love that you shared that with us. Keep doing more of the same, right? So you're going to get support here and we're going to keep sharing our experiences as Jenna yeah. was saying. So keep following us, like, and subscribe. Go to starfamilywisdom.com. There's wonderful resources there designed by Jenna go to get, help you. Go get your woo on. <laughs> go get your woo on. Join the Harry Potter Hogwarts school in your imagination because <laughs> why not? And, you know, just have fun. Have fun with exploring life, exploring yourself and uh, dressing how you want to, you know, skateboard to work in your rainbow pants is how I put it. Like, yes. Just do, be you. Yes. Yeah. Be your weird self. Woo woo is our new normal. And don't forget to go to starfamilywisdom.com. Join the newsletter so that you get updates and mm -hmm. info about all of the new things that are happening at Star Family Wisdom. And we will see you on the other side for we'll our <laughs> next episode. Thank you all for joining. It's been so good to be here with you and sharing our woo together. Yes. <laughs> yes. It is. It is pretty great. It's the yeah. most fun conversation that we like to have is just talking about all this wonderful so-called weirdness yes and so. we cannot wait to have more with you yes so. keep joining us we'll see you very soon yes look for us on our podcast platforms the website and instagram as well thanks so much guys for listening we'll talk to you later bye for now